Yeah, this one's going to be great. Uh, I mean, when it's all said that, yes, this is happening right off from the Pacific region, these two teams have actually faced each other before, way back when, when we kicked off the Cold War season here in the CCL. It went in Colorado Frost's favor in a 3-0 fashion. Some of those maps you will see again if you watch that match or you are a fan of either the Cowboys or the Frost out from Colorado. But still, when you look at the schedule that has been coming through, the end of split one, split two, facing all against all these top cut teams. A lot of breaks in between, whether it's holidays or just the break from schoolwork, depending on where you are in the college year. You're going to be able to focus a little bit more, and this is when it really does truly count. A lot of interesting statistics to even talk about from top to bottom of all eight players that are about to be in between these two teams. I'm just so excited to be able to see it all unfold. It does absolutely favor the side of Wyoming. I mean, all, all together, all together uh, for when you're when you're thinking about this for uh, University of Wyoming, they are sitting here nine and 46 percent win percentage comparatively to the forty seven uh, coming out from Colorado Frost. So I, I think that yes, you are absolutely right to say that this does favor Wyoming McCormill, uh, but they are three and zero on this map mode combo versus the two and three versus Colorado Frost. And that screams comfort. Absolutely. I think that when you're looking at the map fans' vetoes and the overall map set, Wyoming actually got a pretty good grasp of everything. And, and when you're thinking about this from yep. top to bottom across all three game modes, Wyoming, they absolutely need to be able to win a hard point. This is probably one of their weakest game modes. Search and Destroy is going to be their benefactor. We were talking, yes, absolutely in the digital green room, if you will, just about what this might actually have to be for Wyoming to come yep. in and beat Colorado Frost. But it's going to have to come through. they got to steal a hard point. They have a real good shot to do it here. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, hell, when we get to qualifiers, when we get to playoffs, any any type of league series, whatever it might be, it's the most exciting time, as I mentioned beforehand. But truly speaking, going into this, it's all about momentum as we get into the playoffs. And for the side of Wyoming, eight and three in the bottom cut, and although technically they were playing against worse competition in terms of overall map count when they got to it after split one ended, for the side of the Colorado Frost, they came out of their top cut at three and eight. So momentum wise for themselves, they're not really, I guess, that hot team that you want to see. OK, we know that they're good. We know that they're going to do well. and We know they're going to qualify. It's still very up in the air right now. The 10th seeded Colorado Frost in terms of seeding for regional qualifiers and the 15th seed of Wyoming is looking to be a relatively even match. Yeah, uh, I think the, you're right to, to think that that is more than likely going to be the case <laughs> coming in towards this one. Uh, this, I mean, looking at where they what they did from split one and split two mm -hmm. in the same region, looking at some of the competitors that they have, they have faced across the board, one absolutely sticks out, and that's where it's going to be coming through because to make it to the playoffs, yes, you have to complete this mm -hmm. run through a single elimination bracket of the regional qualifiers. And who's waiting for you at the end of this in between Wyoming and Colorado <laughs> Frost? It is going to be New Mexico State University. <laughs> One team of which both of these two teams have faced, 3 0s yep. on the different odds of the spectrum. Well, University of Wyoming actually were able to beat 3 0 versus New Mexico State. <laughs> Colorado Frost lost 3 to 0. And those happen towards the middle of split number one and towards the tail end, depending on which side that you are looking at. So, again, this has the workings to be an absolutely, I have no idea what's about to be happening. All I have are my stats, <laughs> all I have are the numbers, but it's going to come down to the passion. How much are you bringing to the table? How much more do you want to make it to playoffs? Well, map number one, folks. Raid hard point right off the rip. Neon, the wall bangs out across. Arctos going to get a couple of shots inside. Metro is there to clean up Arctos as well. So that's a two piece from him right off the bat. And one thing we got to talk about proper in that first series, Metro, a 2.6 overall series, KD. No, so, I mean, those are some impressive numbers uh, coming off from the team captain of Colorado <laughs> Frost. They are leading them across every single game mode and actually leads them in average hard point time. This or do it all. We'll have to see if they can absolutely carry for Colorado Frost versus University of Wyoming. And so far, so good. I mean, you're starting off, you're trying to hold off to these spawns. University of Wyoming, they're only trying to dedicate a few numbers here and there to push out towards ring. But the main focus is inside a kitchen where Yeti was able to take down one, but Metro is close enough to back laundry so they can try to keep this locked out. And University of Wyoming, they are still spawning in towards garage. 
Hot start, 30 points on the board in counting for the side of Colorado State. Razzle Dazzle gets shut down over towards cutout. He was trying to make a pinch play with the rest of his team in order to try and get a bit of kitchen control. Doesn't work out. Now it's going to have to be a hit from the front here. Metro finds one with the Craig. Helps from Proplex. Is going to be able to find that. Iguana trades out with the Semtex, but still a relatively slow push from the side of Wyoming Esports and towards the front, waiting for the team to play. Now it's going to be Arctos trying to set up another pinch. 0-5 to start out this game. 6-1 and from Metro. Falls, unfortunately, isn't able to find streaks early on in the beginning of this game but with 45 seconds left in the kitchen hill wyoming esports they've broken through the front now they got to be wary of a colorado frost pinch he spent a minute straight of just trying to break in towards b2 spawns they needed a very early break inside b2 they're able to do just that but can you stabilize the spawns are going to be close colorado frost they're bulldozing down through the front door they're inside of the hill but it's so hard to deal with these recurring numbers that university of wyoming are able to bring towards the table 1v1 for the scrap time iguana won't be able to beat Metro starting off with a very hot hand in one. You already mentioned that they weren't able to get streaks, but look at the mini map. Off of the 40 seconds that they were able to get off of P1, look at the rotation over towards P3. A money hill of P2 got flipped back on its head. University of Wyoming Esports, they are ruined. Oh, it took about, I'd say, 30 seconds to even try to break Kitchen for the side of Wyoming. They held it for about 10, and Colorado Frost knocked back down to the front door, was able to get the scrap time and the rotations over towards the next point. Iguana around the corner is able to find nice. one Yeti there with a trade pinstripe kill feed as they push on through. Neon has the final word, but Razzle Dazzle could go ahead and be the benefactor here. No, as three players in towards the point, all staring at him as they push through the gym. Nobody there. Razzle Dazzle, some shots. And although they're going to be able to break through here for the time being, and now Colorado Frost is going to be forced once again to have to break back into this point with 30 seconds left and having about a 60 point lead you're okay with giving this out of wyoming this time and rotating over towards the basketball court for bp number four but look at metro just being an absolute pest just hitting it from ac unit one more time threatening the scrap time it, we're only halfway through the first set of hills but it, it just feels like colorado frost has kept wyoming on their back foot since the early gecko and this is truly wyoming's esports it, this is the hand that they have been dealt they've been trying to break in very early trying to play for the favorite spawns in towards p2 and it's put them on the back foot considerably you gotta win these gunfights coming on through they're in for basketball courts they deal with kodiak trying to hit through the front and not a bad setup considering but you're gonna need about 50 seconds to bring yourself back into this game you you wyo Point number six and Yeti had a huge help to his teammate Arctos over towards the front. Iguana in the back is able to find a kill as well. So that solidifies the spawns for the side of Wyoming. They push back through the front. And now it's gonna be the side of Colorado Frost. Once again, they haven't had the rot or rather, they've had the rotations throughout the entirety of this match so far in terms of getting towards the next hill. Wyoming, the last two hills, they've shown a pretty good, at least decent push in terms of a team push to get these spawns to get the hill time and be able to rack up a bunch of points. Again, it's still about a 50-60 point game in between both of these two two teams but with 23 seconds of scrap and Colorado Frost not opting to push towards it a slow start maybe but they're starting to turn the switch a little bit get back over towards middle map win some crucial gunfights and I mean you had a player start out 0-5 now 4-11 a bit better but a couple of kills is going to help more than none yeah I mean that's fine just stick Arctos on, on the objective look at their they're past a minute of OBJ time let the other three players try to create some space and it's working out wonderfully they got the full 40 that I was talking about, plus some extra on P4. And they're already threatening inside of P5. University of Wyoming, they are here trying to break in early, but the setup is just too strong from Colorado Frost. They will be able to stabilize, which is about 40 seconds remaining inside of P5. But, I mean, when it comes down to University of Wyoming Esports, one good break, and they're right back into this game. They just want to try to keep it scrappy here. I don't, I don't know if I like player number eight playing all the way over towards top ring for that long. And then he gets cut off by player number three in Neon. The reason I don't like that play is because when he's sitting up top there, he's not allowing his team to get any positioning without getting a couple of kills. And if nobody's pushing ring because they have water steps control, they know somebody's at pillars. So trying to get back to middle map is going to be virtually impossible. But 20 seconds left. Now it looks to Colorado Frost. Once again, they have the rotations over towards P1. But with the split spawn coming out from the side of Wyoming, they have a very good opportunity to get in towards this point. Hopped up top, two on one gunfight over towards the ring it's gonna be proplex who comes out on top 2 hp as well on a five spree potential to play for streaks he's trying to set up here on p1 but arctos is going to be able to take them back down in towards the second set of hills we will go just about double the amount of score line colorado frost currently hold over their adversaries out from wyoming but even still university of wyoming esports they actually find themselves right back where they started over on the garage side they want these p2 spawns but it's this setup again from colorado frost that has not really been broken up and when you line them up like that lucky kill comes through razzle dazzle is now going to have to keep their life while the reinforcements try to work through the middle of the map 
Cody X on five, Neon on three, looking for potential streaks here. A minute and 52 seconds for the player on five, but eventually falls down. And well, there go the two streaking for the side of Colorado Frost. Wyoming, they're gonna break in for about 25 seconds. And Colorado Frost, you're not gonna see them push over towards the hill here. They're gonna sit on these head glitches, wait for a couple of players to start getting a little bit aggressive and push up. Make sure they hold down the P2 spawns and then try to play through middle map as well. But you see three stacking the kitchen right now from Colorado Frost, the side of Wyoming. They're playing over towards P1. And yes, scrap time's big, but with an 80 point deficit here, on our second set of rotations with only about 70 seconds needed for the set of Colorado Frost to win this game. You've got to be wary of this hold that they have on Kitchen. Oh, nice bait and switch. Iguana's going to take down one. This is going to open up the floor to try to push through the back, but no one cleared out towards the cutout wall. Proplex takes down Iguana in the hit from the front unsuccessful. And you said it, McCornville. You didn't have to hit towards the hill. You don't need this timing for Colorado Frost. You have reached Wyoming Esports. They absolutely do. In Colorado Frost, they have funneled them into these very narrow choke points. Pinstripe kill feed is fine because they are just whittling down University of Wyoming Esports as this hard point goes along. Set up for P2 last time. Was the side of Colorado Frost. Wyoming broke in for a touch, and well, they'll do it once again. However, because Colorado Frost were able to break back in and History repeats itself proper, and if that's anything, Wyoming, although they do go, go ahead and, at least for the time being, have those rotations over towards P3 with 15 seconds of scrap time going to the side of Colorado Frost. They'll need 20 seconds to win the game. Any kills the side of Colorado Frost get here, spawn the side of Wyoming over towards P2 once again. And although it's a pinch play opportunity, it's gonna be a four on three gunfight over towards the garage, especially if player number seven can't get over there in time. Player number seven might actually have a pinch opportunity ahead of him. Iguana might have to be able to blow this wide open. He's able to take down one. He's getting the information that the player is over by the small room, but Metro absolutely smokes him. So now the opportunity still presents itself. Again, winner's advantage is here. One good break with just about 20 seconds or so remaining, and Colorado Frost can put this game to bed, and they're playing this slow. Juan is going to be able to take down two more with a Semtex. So this hold will be a good one. 30 seconds now remaining inside of P3, and Colorado Frost are probably just going to be looking towards the middle of the map. Send Metro just to try to feel with it, deal with a couple of exit frags. They won't be able to do so, but this rotation over towards new is what Colorado Frost want. I mean, Colorado Frost, P1, P2, their homestay. Wyoming, P3, P4, their homestay. And then a scrappy point number five. We're accustomed to seeing a scrappy point number five, but not as much as we've seen here between these two teams. Colorado Frost, some shots over towards the front. How in the hell does Proplex win that gunfight? I have no idea. Finds a second one as well with a Diamati feeling himself here on a raid as they're looking to close this one out on the rotations over towards the basketball courts. 20 seconds remaining for the side of Colorado Frost to win. No offensive push from the side of Wyoming in sight. They can sit passive, they can sit collective, and with just about 10 seconds left, it's all gonna be through the front door from the pool for the side of Wyoming. Shots come through, Metro finds one, Yeti a trade, but will it be enough? As Iguana now pushes through, it's the Cavalry flying through the front, Proplex, Metro, shots in the back, somehow Arcto slides in, the shots are gonna be there around the front, one more point, one more contest, won't matter. Colorado Frost, they show the supremacy here in map number one. The 10th seed beats the 15th seed in the Pacific region to go ahead and win and put themselves up. One nothing in the series. I mean, you just go back and look at the, the slang just discrepancy the discrepancy in between these two teams. It was severe. In, uh, not even off the rip again, that was a, a almost the right play. I say almost the right play just because it lacked a little bit of the execution as far as the gunfights <laughs> are concerned, but Raid is such a, a heavy dependent on as far yep. as winning those gunfights, taking the map away from the enemy team, and playing those power positions. And it just seemed that time and time again, rotation after rotation, Setup after setup, barring a, a few different setups on P4 or P3, yeah. P4, University of Wyoming, Colorado Frost, they were just playing the cleaner hard point game. And, you know, statistics, throw them out the window. That, that's what's really <laughs> going to be able to win you a game at the end of the day is those core fundamentals. And it really doesn't get talked a lot when it comes down to these CCL True. players that these are collegiate athletes. Of course, they are focused on their studies first. But when you're able to showcase core fundamentals like that on a map mode like Raid Hardpoint, I mean, even in their three losses, they only lost with about 50 seconds yeah. or so. And when you're able to showcase that core fundamental on Hardpoint, you hope that it's able to exist across all the maps within the pool because that was a good one. Yeah, it was fantastic. And well, once again, we talked about Metro at the beginning of this series saying, hey, you know, 2.6 overall in the first series where these two teams met. However, right now, after map number one, I'm extremely impressed with the performance that Kodiak's had. Not only getting himself, uh, uh, what was it, over 25 kills, but not to mention basically three minutes of hill time throughout the entirety of that game as well. So stacked up in multiple areas, willed his team to the victory. And that was a huge reason why the side of Colorado Frost was able to get it done in map number one in a dominant fashion. So we look over to the S and D though, Miami, we were talking about how the side of Wyoming, they want to run it back on the side of Colorado Frost, show them that, Hey, we're going to at least have something better for you this time. Maybe a bit more adjustments on the table for them. 
but more importantly, it's going to have to be in the way of slaying power because it's something we didn't see too much there in map number one. Well, it could also be through the you know the sheer grit of, of one's brain muscles as well. When it comes down to search and destroy, those True. are some very different fundamentals comparatively to Hardpoint. And you know when you're looking at this from top to bottom, as far as a head to head is concerned, University of Wyoming, 66 percent 12 and 6 overall for search and destroy across the entirety of the season compared to the 8 and 8 uh, of colorado frost and i know what you're probably thinking there calm down <laughs> i talked about stats with going in towards the first map but this is something entirely different going in towards miami search and destroy mm -hmm. yes one of those three losses for university of wyoming was against colorado frost we already talked about the run back that this is a reprise from their last time facing off against each other but the one time against a top cut team that university of wyoming esports they had to play it again it was against oregon green and they were able to to win six to three and for colorado frost they were able to win a couple of round 11s versus some other top cut teams i believe it was versus asu maroon yeah but they also lost to new mexico state university six to zero so again it's a toss-up but it all comes down to those fundamentals who's going to be able to showcase those timings because we know mccormill miami is a massive map you could fit so many crossroads inside of my of miami it's not even funny at absolutely this point. but when it comes down to the rotations and finding those first ones <laughs> it's got to be a decisive one I'm also looking at the creativity to be able to see what these two teams have to offer because you're going to need all of that plus some more uh, continuing on with the regional qualifiers and hell, even playoffs. I mean, proper too. Like, something that I guess we kind of almost forget is that in week two, when these two teams faced off in the S&D, it was a completely different, not only set of weapons that we're using, but snipers and smokes were also still being used inside That's of fair. the search and destroy game mode. So how does that now play into this narrative that we're trying to push here of the side of University of Wyoming, potentially making a comeback and being able to beat the side of Colorado Frost here? Tensions are high. Stakes are high here to get past not only this round, but to play New Mexico State University in the next round of this regional qualifier to then make playoffs. I mean, what? From each region, there's 12 teams playing in these qualifiers to get into playoffs, and only four teams from each region are actually going to get there? So for the side of Colorado's Frost, okay, yeah, great. You won map number one, but two, Wyoming University, you know they're not going to go down without a fight. And the most scary and terrifying thing that you can face as a team with a series lead is a team with nothing to lose. <laughs> so true actually you're going to war we ain't got nothing to lose I'm laying it all on the line we're just gonna run at you and just try our best but here's the thing though if, you, if you're not just gonna be able to you know play with that sort of mentality you're not gonna win the gunfights true even on a mechanical level that's got to be detrimental to towards what your initial game plan was which, which is quite barbaric keep in mind you but you know miami you got to be able to finesse it to go back to your initial point that yes maybe lw3 tundras and smokes were being used in miami search and when these two teams did play last Regardless, I don't think you're really worried about that if you are no. the side of Colorado Frost, given the quality beams that we saw from Metro. That's an AR player, by the way, on a very long distance <laughs> map of Miami Search and Destroy. I'm sure that they'll be just fine. We've seen ARs oh, find sure. tons of value on Miami Search and Destroy, <laughs> whether it's defensive on the dumpsters, the Bizzards building, Tiki, the, the party boat, the commander. What, what is it even called? I don't even care anymore. It's just it, when you have an AR that is shooting beams like that, this map becomes a little bit more doable, but you're looking at this on the other side for University of Wyoming Esports, a player to really watch out for would be Razzle Dazzle, 17 and 19, the closest player to go positive on that hard point. But at the end of it all, they're sitting at a 1.47 KD. They need to find the openings for these teams. A player I also want to turn your attention towards is Yeti for the side of Wyoming. Had the best KD overall in the series against the side of Colorado Frost in the very first one that they played. So is that a little indication of what we could see in the S&D? It's the main reason why they were able to at least take four rounds off the board of Colorado Frost, but as a very slow offensive push is going over towards A, you've got player number one and Razzle Dazzle pushing up, and I believe Proplex might have spotted him out over towards the left side, but as Yeti finds that first blood in the round, pick comes through, Kodiaks is forced to back off with that SMG. They're just going to be waiting for the side of Wyoming to push up over towards A. Arctos, the bomb carrier. Would love to get up here, Scott Free. I mean, you can see, again, Proplex is in such a great spot to blow this wide open. I think that... Yeah, Arctos just tried to hit this a little bit too far forward, and Proplex is just going to lock down on this heady okay. in line, too. And one of the numbers of fantasy you thought was going to go towards University of Wyoming, now the bomb is <gasps> dropped in a precarious position. <sighs> Unfortunately caught sprinting straight through middle map. Now Iguana in an impossible one versus three. As he comes around the corner, checks left, knows that Cody Axe is still there. Stun check won't find anything. Pushing over towards the right, shots on the Proplex. Nice, back over towards the left. You got to know Cody Axe is still there. Your teammate just died to him. And although he could have moved around the map, you also saw the stun check come from the same location. So unfortunate timing, doesn't check that left. Gets one in the one versus three, but nonetheless, oh. Proplex with a huge two piece with that Krig that we talked about, those long range angles. Proper, you hit the point home comes true in round, round number one. I, I mean, you just got to know that that position will probably more than be there. If you're not 
eating shots already out of the visitor's window. That position on that back staircase, Hetty, is a brutal one. You saw from Proplex's perspective, but you barely even get a glimpse of a helmet looking at that down lane. Narcos not taking the proper rounding. The Colorado Frost have a leg up on this situation. How about this aggressive play towards B? Garage push. Slow but surely coming true. Up towards the top, Iguana doesn't opt to actually get inside. Could have played the camera angle on the staircase. However, chooses to at least keep his life for the time being back on the little ledge that he can use as a head glitch. Works out well. Gets that first pick from the back. Not going to be able to find it, but Cody X with the top will trade it out, making it a three versus three. Garage push still very much in play for the side of Colorado Frost. However, Wyoming also sitting in the garage with two players waiting for this to come through. Player number one making a very long flank over towards A, potentially trying to spot somebody from the side of Colorado Frost making a play over towards A, but unfortunately it won't work out. It's going to be a very, very, very lengthy push that might take a little too much time to really come into fruition in a three versus three unless they wrap this over towards A and he has the position but back over towards b we go as yet he looks up top with the crick oh man colorado frost are just baiting this is going to be a b committal but they saw them exit did you what did university of wyoming razzle dazzle was just waiting for the exit but now they're going to recommit towards this push 18 seconds left and you got to deal with this crossfire the university of wyoming have Neon gets some horrible timing as Arctos finds the kill. Cody X is there now for the trade. Proplex oh, no. comes through, makes it a two versus one. Nine seconds left. The plant will go down. Five seconds remaining in the round. However, 45 will be added as Razzle Dazzle now tries to make the rotation back in a one versus two. Craig pre-aims over towards the left. Won't find much. Proplex is there, but player number seven very patiently, very passively will be playing over towards top purple around the corner. Proplex is there. Impossible gunfight to win. You're not going to win that nine times out of ten. Colorado Frost take a situation where they unfortunately got picked off the board first, make it a two versus one. Wait, not only take the round, but have a commanding 2-0 lead, now winning an offense and a defense. Yeah, and I thought the push was going to be blown open towards that B site the second that Iguana got bulldozed over coming out from the piano staircase. Was not to be at all, but even so, the crossfire was not really a good one. You had both players essentially from the same angle, one back behind the laundry van, one back behind that dumpster, where you know more than likely a player would be probably have to look for a different setup in their upcoming defense but they're gonna have to try to take an offense here at university of wyoming quite like that flavor of a b aggressive hit the difference here is that yeti is gonna be looking for that curve control university of wyoming they would <laughs> love colorado frost to try to push through aggressively and that flash check might give them the information on both sides i'll face it an aggressive push it looked aggressive at first and then everybody just kind of stopped in a standstill on the side of wyoming not really able to push in towards that bottom piano. However, Metro just playing up top on the balcony, looking over for one potentially to slide on through. Metro at 0-2. Talked about how he was going to be an influential player inside of the series, but it's really been Cody Axe who has been not only the the stone hold inside of map number one, but here in map number two, continuing on a 4-0 and spree, looking for three more kills, which could get him the streaks as well. Razzle Dazzle around the corner. Shots there onto Neon won't come through. And as Neon finds a second kill in the round for this out of Colorado Frost, Iguana finds one onto Metro, makes it a 2v3, a bit easier of a gunfight potentially but Iguana playing very, very aggressive out towards the balcony. Oh, the shot's got to find there from Arctos up top. Colorado Frost, that's a fall-apart round for the side of Wyoming, especially after that very aggressive push at the beginning, and it all comes down to Iguana just playing that way too recklessly on the balcony. Oh, that's where these shots... My word, Pro Okay, Plex. cool. I mean, through so many rounds, <laughs> it's really just come down to Proplex finding these very key picks and turning the round back on its head. And you just look at Proplex, 5-1 and one overall. Yes, they've only found uh, one first blood, but even still, averaging 285 damage a round with that AR in hand. Yeah, that's why I was saying that was going to be Metro is influencing the map, but Proplex is playing much more that laid-back style, holding those long angles, and it's just working. And Colorado Frost now again, back towards the B site, no curve control. They want this purple staircase, and they want it now. Oh, what a stick! Oh, the stick. Oh, they're going to find two! two. It. No! Iguana somehow, they slide out at the same time, and unfortunately, the stick ruins the opportunity for streaks for Colorado Frost, but as Proplex is able to find one, two could be the equalizer, as it's a three versus two for the side of Wyoming. Shots from Neon, not going to be there. Iguana over the top with a 74U, beams one into the garage. Now it's Proplex on four. If he finds all three here, he'd have streaks to close the round out as well. It's going to be very difficult, though, and a damning process at that. Yeah, and you're probably just going to be watching Proplex's POV for the next 35 seconds. They would love to keep their life. Potentially to play for streaks would be big. It's such a difficult spot to try to recover this bomb. They're not going to hit this through the front door of Piano. Maybe try to catch one player off guard. Iguana's going to get the information. There's no players actually pushing through the boulevard, and that's what? actually a really nice kill. Gets the information on Yeti. Do you take this solo challenge? 18 seconds remaining, and 
I mean, this is aggressive. You're playing for streaks now. Player coming through middle though. You gotta watch out for player number one and Razzle Dazzle. Up the staircase somehow, Yeti doesn't see him. Gets the shots there. Player number one can get there, but not gonna find the shots either. Turns around. Oh no, oh There's no. no. Proflex down the staircase. Looks out towards middle map and they're gonna run away from one another. Ooh. Almost. Let's not, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, but almost. It, it was it was probably about five feet between these players from a round win and a one versus three, but Thankfully, Iguana's pick at the beginning of the round of two is able to come through and win the win the. Can I say win the round? I mean, uh, yeah. Yes, I mean, but... I'm running out of fingernails for how close <laughs> that round really was, and it really shouldn't have been that way too. And I was gonna talk about Iguana, how you had rounds to play with. You you finally won a round. This was a big round for them. You don't want to go down 0-4 in any search and destroy. You go one three here. They were sitting on three kills, potential to play for streaks. If they could start se uh, sequencing these rounds together for Proplex. I mean, they're one kill away for getting an <laughs> artillery strike. That That is so influential on a big open map like Miami. Six and four for Iguana out the staircase. Metro, they know they're there, but the Semtex over the top, not going to find one except for a little bit of information on where that player might be. Yeti, Razzle Dazzle both come through. And now it's down to Proplex to see what he does here in this situation with his teammate. Metro left on an island and basically a one versus four by himself over towards the site. will be able to find that first pick. Looks for the second, finds two. Somehow still alive, looks back around. And now it's a much easier one versus two for Yeti. Basically did this the last round. But now as he's got to push out, the B-bomb will go down, picks up the 74. You'd have a much better chance at close range looks over towards the left yeti finds a huge kill there doesn't get his teammate and that prohibits the streaks from being earned wyoming takes their second round in a row off of what could have once again been a round that I, uh, just falls apart yeah but, but you're starting to see those mid round and, and those mid map adaptations coming all the way through rather than just halting expecting the push through to come through of piano they just take matters in their own hands and University of Wyoming Esports, uh, they just push all the way through. They're able to find the opening kills and then the ending crossfire just trying by proxy. You got one player inside a laundry. Surely they got to be flanking through top purple. Wonderful execution on that offense. But they can they go for the three in a row here? Player number five is going to be Metro. They're off on an island, quite literally inside this garage. They're going to create a lot of noise and then potentially join their team over towards this A push. Oh. Razzle Dazzle's in a great spot on this head glitch to read that the push is coming this way great spot but you gotta hit those shots there a bit shaky left and right there the horizontal not gonna be able to do much as the player still sneaks through back over towards that a site metro on the ramp looking for a couple of players on driveway information for the side of colorado needed right now is they've got a very difficult fight here not gonna be looking towards the left player number four can get some great timing here we'll be able to find the shot so iguana makes it a four versus two but you still got proplex and kodiaks alive the top slayers in the SMD, but really the most important and influential players thus far, as every single round that has been very close between these two teams, mainly the last two, in those 1v situations, it's been these two players who have made it extremely close. So as we look at Proplex over towards the right and Kodiaks back over towards the left, both are going to stay alive for now, three versus two over towards the A site. Arcos is in a spot where they can potentially blow it up if they're even able to get past that first staircase, of which they are not. And they ha were unable to move from that Tiki position, losing their curve control, and then pulling many players back. There was a lot of mistimings coming up from that round of Colorado Frost, but there it goes. The answer back. Three rounds for Colorado Frost. Three back in kind from University of Wyoming. These adaptations are going big. Yeti's now on five straight. The potential to play for streaks down the line. This could actually be really big as far as the momentum is concerned in a Miami search and destroy. That opens up the A site more. If you do have that artillery strike, not even with the pings as well, but mm -hmm. just dropping the mortars for retakes or just trying to defend the bomb plant. But how about this push? Kodiaks, you talk about their slang with an SMG. They're actually <gasps> just going to push all the way through. And I'm oh, pretty no. sure, yeah, Iguana, that's a free kill. Every time, COD timing, unfortunate, but you got to check your corners, man. It's Call of Duty. You got to do it every single time. Pushes up. Doesn't pay the price for it, and as Cody X falls, the side of you, Wyoming, they've got another advantage at four and three in the life count. And you said beforehand, Yeti, with those potential streaks, it's a great opportunity here in Proplex. He's been playing this A-long site all game long. And now as they start to push up, though, it's going to be much more of a difficult gunfight. Metro over towards the top. Proplex, they've got two Krigs looking for this. So Wyoming needs to be careful here, especially with Neon making this long flank through. Player number two and Yeti was watching for it beforehand. But now as Neon sneaks through the back line, he's got an opportunity to make a big play. Trade equalizer comes through. Razzle Dazzle falls. Aww. 25 seconds left. And now from the back, he spots out Arco. Shots are there. Fine 
finds the kill. Two versus three. It was a four versus three. Now a one versus three. Yeti in middle map falls as well. Metro finds the kill. And for the first time in three rounds, Colorado Frost get back on the board. They fortunately will stay in the lead and command of this series. But you got to keep thinking at the same time. All right. Even though the side of Colorado had the 3-0 advantage, Wyoming made great adjustments after losing those three rounds. It's going to take another three rounds for them to make adjustments again, or can they counteract what they just saw on the defensive side? And that was such a big play coming out from Neon, too. It didn't face any resistance. I mean, Yeti was searching for them over inside that hotel pool area for what felt like a solid 25 seconds, was unable to find them. Then with Razzle Dazzle going down, that's your boat control. So that opened up that little angle so wide, and Yeti had to drop that because you want... University of Wyoming, they had to play for the bomb. But here comes Colorado Frost looking to string together one more round. It's going to be a B push. Arctos, he tried to make that quick push work, and it would have if it was only maybe one or two players there. But it was the entire team of Colorado Frost. Iguana once again is able to find those shots on the neon. A little bit of deja vu instead of the garage, but his proplex over towards the long angle is going to get cut down by Yeti. Wish it might have came in the last round for streaks. And as Iguana drops down below, great timing on the Metro, but more importantly, great knowledge there. It's basically going to be the exact same thing once again with Iguana escaping his life away. One versus three. Shots are there. He's trapped in between a couple of players pinching through. And as Razzle dazzle with the Krig is there oh ho, ho! spicy it's 4-4 four, four. that's bad juju baby you can't shoot the bodies when you just want to round to tie it up but i love it i'm all i'm absolutely here for it too we are seeing really good back and forth again it's been a lot of b pushes the one slow stint over towards a was very unsuccessful for colorado frost so they try to go back towards that b push and it gets flattened immediately the spread so wise just to be able to read that push coming all the way through and it's not like on the b site university of wyoming are doing anything too crazy they're holding the same sturdy setup and now we're looking to upset colorado frost's b setup oh, Cody Piano. they've tried to do this multiple times here too oh. proper they get the first kill as two are there now over towards middle map they got to be careful cody has to be careful though no. as yeti jumps around the corner they're going to be able to get it a little bit of an aggressive challenge there works out in the favor of wyoming as metro isn't able to find any shots over towards b oh my god oh my god no he's there in the corner but he's able to find two proplex finds one as well razzle dazzle equalizes it out four and five two spree looks for the player over towards evermore huge one versus one here razzle dazzle didn't spot him neither did proplex though they just saw each other technically through the x-rays but had absolutely no idea where the other player was bomb's gonna go down towards b this is gonna work out in proplex's favor over the top should be able to find him oh, he, 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 he has to go for the plan so proplex over towards the left gonna be able to find the shot throw that was escapes shot throw the corner oh my goodness almost in razzle dazzle's favor round win match point about to potentially go up 2-0 in the series if they win one more round huge play here from metro proplex and middle map <laughs> able to find another and he wanted the ninja to fuse he didn't want those kills proper Oh, man, you saw they immediately just trying to check that little cubby. Just a little bit too late. Caught mid-sprint. <laughs> Push got blown open wide. He just the trigger discipline was so smart for Metro. Again, potentially wanting that Ninja Diffuse. I forget who I need to credit for that little clip that I saw, but that's definitely something you could try to do in that scenario. But absolutely, a potential to go up 2-0 as far as the series is concerned. Colorado Frost are going back towards this A push. Razzle Dazzle, four and six. They got to be able to lock down this lane if not being able to find first blood to boot. There's one player that's got to make himself uh, felt a little bit more presence wise inside of this game. It's got to be Arctos at one and eight. EKIA probably doesn't say much different either. And, you know, you, you hate to kind of call out one player specifically, but in an SMD where every kill is so crucial in a three versus three, an opportunity now with himself still alive and his two other teammates to make some noise. Iguana, that SMG player up towards the top, takes down Metro, makes this opportunity to tie things up and send us to a round 11 much, much easier on the side of the Cowboys. Kodiak's in the corner, playing very slowly, crouch peeking up towards the top. Proplex is looking for the flank on Iguana, knows that he's going to be there, and his Arctos is around the corner, just going to back off wisely. Six and six for Kodiak's, looking for the player over towards the left, can't spot him in middle map. And Iguana in the back is going to have a huge gunfight on the Proplex, wins the kill, one versus three. Yeti around the corner, there it is, round 11 proper. It's go time. And this is just great back and forth. Ever since we were tied up three apiece, we had started off three rounds in a row for Colorado Frost. Three rounds back and answered in kind for University of Wyoming. Now we find ourselves here in a round 11. What are the sides going to be looking like? How much success have we been seeing? Again, Colorado Frost, they have not found success over towards A, though the same thing could be said for University of Wyoming. And it's all thanks to ProPlex at 12 and 5 is sitting up in the visitor's building continuously. But we got to get the decisive here, University of Wyoming. Some of their yep. best pushes have been when they've taken piano 
so quickly. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to be looking to do. Player number seven of Cody Axe is going to be that mid lane player to try to rotate on early. But before the setup, I might even be here. University of Wyoming, they might just break this up. Great flash. They're coming with the Semtex through the top there. Yeti finds the first kill. Razzle the second. <gasps> this is huge for the side of Wyoming. But we've seen comebacks before from the side of Colorado Frost, mainly with Metro and Proplex being the ones that are able to equalize it. Three versus two up top. They've got piano control. But look at player number eight all the way across the map. Either A, Wyoming needs to watch the flank, and Iguana's going to do exactly that, or they're going to try and wrap this over. Iguana finds the shots with the 74U in the middle. One versus three. Razzle wow. dazzles there. Two rounds in a row. The series, we're tied up in one. One to one Wyoming the Cowboys come out in the SD. They rewrite the scripts for the first time these two teams played in the regular season and proper when it matters the most. Wyoming get it done. Yeehaw, McCormick. We got ourselves a series, baby. Let's go. I am so stoked to be able to see how that that, de that entire <laughs> round just deviated. It, it just looks so great. Coming out from those th first three rounds, I'm sure everybody was sitting there along with us as well. It's just like, oh, Colorado Frost, I mean, they're just absolutely <laughs> slaying. Kodiaks and Proplex, they're just having themselves quite the day here after we just got done gassing up both Metro and Neon through that hard point. But, man, I tell you, the brain, that strength, those fundamentals that I was talking about was there. Yeah. What, are, what are those core fundamentals from Search and Destroy? It's those adaptations, being able to read your opponent, being able to see what's successful, feeling around. You brought up Arctos. They didn't exactly have the sexiest KD ratio, but they were playing the role. Just throw elbows, play for the information. Yep. They were getting blooded in those early rounds, but then they started really just pinpointing where these players for Colorado Frost were located at and just ticking slowly yet surely from these <laughs> rounds, A and B, offense and defense didn't really matter. University of Wyoming Esports, it was almost like a ticking tie bomb for, the, for yeah. them to be able to really close out that map. Let's talk about composure, too. After being down 0-3 at the beginning, bringing that back, then going down 4-3, to tying it up 4-4, down 5-4, then they're able to win two rounds in a row, a huge round 11 where you pointed out specifically that that aggressive B push worked out so well for them. They get control of top Piano. Yeti gets that first kill. Razzle Dazzle is able to find a player just on an island trying to hop up towards top Piano. And it works out perfectly. And that's the most beautiful thing that you can have in an s and when your team knows what works for them, make it stick. Proplex tried to play out over towards A. The long range shots didn't work because nobody was there. That he got caught out trying to rotate on back. Iguana made the great play. Wyoming, they are on top there in the s and Six to five. And fortunately for them, they're able to go ahead and knock Colorado down a bit after that first hard point. Didn't look great. We said that was probably going to be the best opportunity for them to win this series is if they took that first hard point now going into the control. It's a whole different ballgame. Yeah, it really is. Uh, so now you move over towards raid control. And as far as uh, control throughout the entirety of CCL, both Colorado Frost and University of Wyoming, they have struggled on mm -hmm. the swing map mode combo, but they're going to have to really showcase their grit here. If you're able to uh, depict anything across from the entire series, Colorado Frost, I mean, they, their gunny is hot. Uh, they are shooting yep. some nukes uh, when certain situations do come around. And in hell, even when situations don't come around, they they turn everything into cake at the end of the day. And it's amazing to be able yep. to see the mechanical skill being showcased like that. But what does it mean in control when you are finding those kills? That's map denial. And you can end up yep. trying to showcase that or, or trying to pinpoint that to, to certain aspects from that raid hard point that Colorado Frost were able to do ever so wonderfully. But University of Wyoming Esports, if they can try to take any bit of that push from B, again, that decisive push with numbers, wait for them to come back when you're even down to 30 seconds in an offensive round for raid control, that's when you're going to try to stack down numbers, read where the enemies yep. are located at, get those numbers, stack that point, get that time. I honestly think University of Wyoming, they might have a solid shot at this respawn, but they got to get the slang numbers up. I mean, I hope so. I think everybody else in here also hopes that they're able to go ahead and really find that next stepping stone in their respawn. Because, I mean, if we look at the trends right now, we said in that raid hard point, okay, yeah, the side of Wyoming, you know, they had a really good opportunity coming into it because of the statistical record that they had on the map, not losing a raid hard point before that. They go into an S&D map where they're really not as proficient as some of the other S&D maps that they tried to go ahead and push forward for themselves. Going into the raid control here, back on the same map as we said beforehand, Two and three record compared to three and three. Could it once again be a betrayal of statistics? You threw them out the window in maps one and two. Can we do it again here in map number three? We'll have to find out. But folks, thank you for staying up late with us. We're going to kick it to a quick break. When we come back on the other side of the break, it's going to be raid control. And I'm ready. I told you to be quick. I told you to be short. Wyoming. 
Well, they've got the hot hand after a round 11 win, Colorado Frost. They won't be able to find the first blood on the map. However, they are over towards A, and they've got the majority of their players over, ready, and set up on power positions to go ahead and find themselves an opportunity at the beginning. Razzle Dazzle finds some shots. Yeti there, pinstripe kill feed. The advantage, though, to the Colorado Frost, at least for the time being, as they spawn close, they're going to be able to stack this point, get the first tick onto A. And folks, remember, this is the old patch, so we're not going to see 20 seconds of time for each tick. 20 seconds no not yet at all but a good overwhelming over towards the a zone this will be secured so that's gonna be good you just chalk this now if you're in university of wyoming you started off with good middle of the map but the break off wasn't successful entirely but look what this words brought you now yet he's all the way over by ac but colorado frost they're not even in their spawn so now it comes down <laughs> to the three players from university of wyoming that are over here to send some of these players back towards the spawn so that way you can keep them trapped in their spawn and this kill feed is quite good now it comes down to yeti to play their part in the back neon razzle dazzle they're just playing these angles they do not want to give up any positioning here especially for neon because this is going to allow them to spawn over closer towards a to make some plays through middle map or maybe through the spawn of the side of wyoming but as the kills come through middle map iguana arctos razzle dazzle they put three down the last one alive for the side of colorado frost even pushed up the map it's gonna be metro gonna have to wait for his teammates hopefully find a first blood around towards the back on the tree head glitch here the player number seven playing the cutout is gonna be razzle dazzle and that's a player he's gonna have to focus in on two kills for each side no advantage for the side of colorado of frost yet wyoming still gonna spawn over towards b no ticks on the site yet with a minute and 25 left in the round and even though that the lives remaining are blocked for you all i will tell you the university of wyoming defensively they actually have a lead four lives actually and these kill feats have been well convincing arctos has had a better kd ratio in this round than they had all series long six and three six straight this is the life for arctos right now they're able to hang back just play in power positions double on up they have players just throwing those bowls and now we've been able to shave a solid minute and 30 off the clock. And Colorado Frost, I mean, they're down to this fall in a minute. And they're dealing with these players. They're just trying to get this mansion back in their favor. We'll finally be able to get out of their spawn successfully. But can you even get over towards this pool zone? Well, proper. Take a look towards your top right. Arctos on a seven spree. That's streaks, baby. And that's already an opportunity to win an offensive round, a defensive round, whatever you need to use it for. You just hope he doesn't use it a little bit too early. However, now we've got players stacked over towards B for Colorado Frost. These are huge gunfights here. Arctos looking over towards left. One more kill. We'll go ahead and find him, the or rather the cruise missile to go through. The last shot of the bullet there into Proplex is going to be able to find that kill. So a seven life disparity between the two teams. Colorado Frost with 25 seconds. It's going to be desperation pushes at this point. Semtex in the water doesn't find anything. Metro finds one. So that's an opportunity to move up the map iguana arctos there make it a nine spree after the snd he didn't like that we were talking a little bit bad about him and his skill set in the snd well in the respawn he's got nine in a row tried to make it double digits but really what it does is it helps his team be at the forefront when talking about getting that defensive push in their favor semtex stuns trophies they stack the point holy hell proper this is looking a bit scary here arctos finds one two ticks on the b zone looking for a couple more inside the window metro's there uses the streaks come through the cruise missile helps them win the defensive Brown shouldn't have needed to use them there at all as it was a nine versus four close round once again as wyoming barely scrapes by at the skin of their teeth but it's still so big to be able to secure that round you had the cruise missile so you saw did they already drop the artillery strike or was just just the ping that they dropped in i'm pretty sure it was just the ping but yep. regardless of the matter you, you still have that in your back pocket but the cruise missile to secure the round this is big because this has the same narrative going in towards the raid hard point at the top of this series that you really got to steal a respawn away from this Colorado Frost roster, University of Wyoming. If you're unable to do that and you're only able to secure search and destroys, but you won't see that fifth and final map. So yep. it's got to be done. And again, just like I was setting up before we sent to that very, very short break was that it's got to be that decisive <laughs> nature that we saw through those search and short rounds. Those B takes were wonderful. You saw them wait for the respawns defensively and then just attack when the numbers were in their favor. Now can they do it on offense? Well, Arctos has found himself in his second coming of of himself in the map and really theoretically speaking if arctos is able to play the same as he did in round number one not only do they have two ticks over towards a if he finds another couple of kills here he could find himself another set of streaks however as proplex and kodiaks come through the hopes and dreams of a second set of streaks will go down with it however with seven objectives for three players on the side of colorado frost and inside of wyoming esports really starting to push up the map and get aggress uh-oh i just witnessed this murder Oh, well, yeah, he was weak. It's alright. It's all right. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, he, he was a little weak. But, still, it, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, gotta get that shot punch. You gotta get that mechanical shot punch going. But University of Wyoming, they're gonna be able to secure the round regardless. And yeah, I mean, Razzle Dazzle, 11 and 7, 15 and 5, triple positive, coming off like double negatives. Like, who is this guy?
where did this come from? But I'm happy to be able to see it. They still have the artillery strike to play with ping or not. Regardless, this is going to be pushed all the way through jungle. Kodiaks is trying to make a play to try to deal with the Guana who's over by these big rocks. But this is an opportunity for University of Wyoming. They, again, are playing patiently. They're baiting out the... Uh, the expo, uh, all of the different errors that Colorado Frost are giving them, they're getting the numbers, but some trades do come through. So now you're just holding the kitchen spawn, but slowly whittling down these kills to get yourself closer and towards this B zone. This is what University of Wyoming have to do to close out this offense. A little sneaky Arctos playing in towards money will be stunned out. The check is there. Metro comes through, and now it's up to Neon to try and find a fight against Iguana. And well, Metro will clean it up for him as they got themselves up in towards the kitchen. Razzle dazzle. Not sure about the shots there. Unfortunately, isn't able to find the kill the player towards bedroom. And yes, glass does break. You got to use a little bit of force, though, Razzle, to get through it. Fortunately, he found that out the, the difficult way. But as Neon around the corner looks for Iguana, he'll be able to find that first kill. Razzle Dazzle, the second, now an opportunity to push up the map. But this is looking identical to what we saw from the side of Wyoming on the defensive side. It's what Colorado Frost is able to do now. But Arctos, who in the hell <laughs> let him do this to Wyoming? Uh, he went 8 and 19 or something in the hard point. 1 and 8 or 2 and 8 or whatever in the search and destroy. This was all just sandbag and lead it up to this very moment. But we got to close out an offense. They were able to stop the clock significantly. Three life lead for University of Wyoming to try to work their way through the middle of the map and get themselves on this B zone. They are just overwhelming Colorado Frost with numbers. What a flip of a switch, but two quick kills come through from Kitchen. You would really love to get that money window in your favor. Now down to 25 seconds. This is the last push for an offensive round. Last push, but they've got the life advantage by three kills right now and towards the kitchen. Gives away his positioning with the 74U. Shots! Proplex wins a huge one, and now they've stacked the point just a bit, but the trophy system won't allow not only the stun, but the Semtex to go through the window to gain any more positioning. Halfway through the B zone they go. Six versus three. If they get set up here, fine. Maybe one or two kills. This should be a round win. There we go. One versus four. Can Arctos go ahead and pull off the impossible inside of the round? There it is. Wyoming Esports. Proper. <laughs> from one and eight, eight times negative, to triple positive in the next game, you don't see that every day. No, you really don't. But I, this is some of that fire, some of that heat that, that you really only feel when your back's against the wall, when the tournament is on the line, and well, in your entire life to try to make it all the way towards uh, the qual or out of regional qualifiers is truly at the cost. So you got a lot of gas coming off of that round 11 win in that search and destroy of Miami. They execute it wonderfully and it's continuing on here again. They are baiting out forced errors from Colorado Frost, trying to get aggressive, trying to play power positions. It's only Metro that's really finding success. Yes, some great individual gunfights here and there, but look at now the slang discrepancy on the opposite yep. side. Proplex is 8 and 17, two, two different rounds. <laughs> this has to be an offensive round of the, the entire year for Colorado yep. Frost to try to get themselves back into this control. I mean, proper, we, we talked about in the very beginning and map number one, how it was the side of Wyoming that was nowhere close in the slang department of the side of Colorado Frost. Well, now, the side of Wyoming, they've got themselves in the slang department. A ticket B for the side of Colorado Frost, and you said it's going to have to be a really good offensive round for them. Oh, no, you thought he was weak. Stop shooting. That's going to be a huge, unfortunate set of circumstances because now they've got two ticks over towards B. You could have been the player that was able to go ahead and get that done and dusted. However, now a one-on-one, -on -one, Iguana, Metro, they've got to have their numbers here, and Metro needs to be very careful for the window push. He was looking up towards it. Iguana, not going to Peak. They're going to give up B at an extra minute onto the clock. And as Wyoming finds three down, B will come through. Close spawns over towards bedroom. And now they can set up a post push over towards A. Get it all the way back down to no progress. And even though there's two minutes still left on the clock, they don't have the life advantage. Colorado Frost can play a bit more reckless here, but they still got to be careful. Uh, it's just such a hard zone to solo defend. And you see Colorado Frost area already able to isolate the kills in the middle of the map. You got player number one on board here with Metro just blocking out from cut all, all the way across jungle. This is going to keep the players trapped. And you're just going to slow down this offense if you are Colorado Frost. Wait for the most opportune moment to try to get yourself on this zone. And it might just be around the corner. He was killed by Yeti to help his teammate out in disparity. From behind, though, it's Kodiak, somebody who has not had a great game compared to the S&D in the hard point. Now on a two spree, looking to go ahead and continue the reign of terror. They've got eight of themselves. They're starting to go ahead and find this progress. But if your player's number one and four, I get you want to have the players from middle map get cut down so you can continue to have a lot of progress over towards A. But you want to stack that point as quickly as possible and at least get two ticks with a minute and 30 seconds left in the round. Arctos pushing up, razzle-dazzle there, but the shots from Neon will go ahead and reign supreme. Arctos around the right side corner, 26. 
26 and 15, make it 27 on a two spree. And as he looks back over towards left, he's by himself solo at A. Two ticks have not come through yet over towards the top. Tries to RKO Kodiak from the top row. Won't be able to get it done. And now once again, they're in a situation where they can and should stack the point. They've only got one player left on the point and you've got to go towards it. You left your player now in a one versus one, a one versus two gunfight. And one up from the top is able to find the last kill as he's one shot. You easily could have won the round right there and now allow the side of Wyoming to get back to it. And although you're still got a four life lead with a minute and 10 seconds left, you could have won the round right there and give yourself an even better chance if this goes to a round number five, which you have to push it to to get the defensive side. Oh, Cody X needs to go down. Big trade, but even bigger kills coming through. And this really starts begging the question, do we use the artillery strike? Do we try to get the advantage? We're down to our last lives here. This would then be able to even up the life count and stop the offense from pushing over towards this zone. But finally, a couple kills do come through. University of Wyoming, they get the breathing room. But the problem is that they're down Arcto. So now the artillery strike is completely off the table. Oh no, proper. Middle map, Cody X is gonna fall as well now. It's a three versus three. We saw the fall apart in the SND for the side of Wyoming. This time it's Colorado Frost who are now down to their last two lives. Wyoming, an opportunity to go up 2-0 -oh, or two to one in the series with a 2-0 -oh lead now. Two more kills or 35 seconds ticking down on the clock. We'll go ahead and give a no. Yeti wins a huge one. Neon, you gotta be able to find that. That's the first time you saw him inside of Art and you can't get it done. Proplex in a one versus three. 11 and 25. This would be huge to rewrite everything in the round. Bottom Art, top Art. He's got a lot of options to choose from back into the zigzag area. He's looking over towards the right. Yeti finds the shots. Wyoming win the three versus six over towards A. Colorado could have won the round if they just stacked the damn point you're not wrong if they stack the point early rather than trying to zone away middle of the map and looking towards kitchen but at that point in time it's actually not the raw the wrong call in my humbled opinion it's not the wrong call because they were they had the life lead like you were talking about if there's any team that had to make a, a more a potent move in that specific moment it was actually university of wyoming you were already down in life so you start baiting out some of those isolated 1v1s, which, you know, given the track record through the entirety of the series so far, has been going in Colorado Frost's uh, favor until this control here on Raid. When you saw University of Wyoming, they were able to really dig deep. They were able to showcase their grit, tenacity, whatever other uh, whatever other word you want to be able to use to describe them. They were able to bring it through because Arctos had themselves a hell of a map. I mean, that, that was the best that we have seen them all the way through. I mean, just let me read this off for you real quick throughout the entirety of the CCL season. This is what we have logged on the website. Mm -hmm. 0.85 KD average on hardpoint, 0.98 KD average on search and destroy, 0.85 KD on control. So what the hell was that? Because that was impressive. And if you're able to bring that through the rest of the series, even remotely going in towards this upcoming hardpoint McCorn Mill, yep. you might not even have to worry about the search and destroy on raid. Playoff Arctos is here. When his team <laughs> needed him the most, he comes up clutch. And folks, on the Bravo channel, the NC Bulldogs take out CU Gold. So... Unfortunately, Colorado Boulder Gold will be out of contention to make playoffs. Black is still obviously in contention as well. But unfortunately, for the side of CU Gold, they will fall. And see Bulldogs will move on to at least the qualification match for playoffs. That begs the same thing here, proper. Backs against the walls now. I said the side of Wyoming. They are, they had nothing to lose down 0 one. Now Colorado Frost, they have nothing to lose down two to one. Two round or two games go their way very, very easily. And both of those games, let me be clear, there was times where it could have gone either way. And for Colorado Frost, you thought they were gonna win the SD early on. Wyoming shows composure, they come back, and all of a sudden they win that game off the back of Arctos being able to carry them up. I mean, you're dropping 30 kills after only dropping one kill in an S D. That's practically unheard of. Right? It's uh. practically unheard of. It's, it's really, it really is just very obscure as far as our esport is concerned to be able to see a player turn around like that. But it, it's not uncommon. It is very rare to say the least. But you know, even still, I, I would almost argue that Colorado Frost damn near beat themselves, especially in that round 11 for searches around Miami. Uh, yep. And even in that third round as well, uh, you know, barring, uh, you know, the, the two different sides of the coin, angel or devil on your shoulder, like I was saying, maybe it was the better call to be able to try to find this isolated kills. They weren't be able to find us. So and maybe at that point you do lean towards Alex's side and yeah, maybe you just stack that damn point earlier on yep. and you close out that map, but it's still the artillery strike was online for Arcto. So maybe that's what you were really worried about at the end of it all. A lot of True. here's a lot of there's a lot of hay says, but at the end of it all, it is university on Wyoming. Uh, they are on map point. This is going in a checkmate hard point. Great search and destroy. If we get to map number five and again, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, and I'm going to hate my statistics every time I read them to you, but, I mean, Colorado Frost, they are 3-0 on this map mode combo, and every single one of their wins have been convincing ones. We're talking, like, 100, 
steps, whole hills. This is again, this plays to their to their favor again. Yep historically through the cold war season it has been more ars for this team than smgs yes kodiaks can absolutely play lights out but proplex and metro have been those two players to watch out for you saw metro in the, in the opening hard point then you saw proplex within that search and destroy but if you're able to bring that same lights out caliber uh with, with such impressive kd ratios to boot in towards his checkmate hard point yeah it, a crit sixes can absolutely be a, a nuisance on this map given how open how long these lanes are and then your smgs can start running haywire in those inner workings that is the same recipe that colorado frost had cocked up for uh that raid hard point now we're gonna have to see if they can do it again but for university of wyoming i mean their losses have been oh. damn near blowout so i'm not too sure as to how this one ended up getting all the way through without truly knowing the actual map bans and vetoes they they do find themselves here but remember what i said mccormill for University of Wyoming to win out the series, what do they have to do? They had to steal a, steal respawn. a respawn. You got that little <laughs> breathing room going in towards this hard point. Just try to keep the gunning warm. If you're able to walk away with a successful opening set of hills, then this might just be doable. But Colorado Frost, I'm sure they're mad. Proper. This only means one thing for the side of Colorado Frost being down 2-1 in the series. They're on upset alert. The team in the top cut are potentially about to lose in four maps to the team from the bottom cut. That has done great. Eight and three for the side of Wyoming through the bottom cut. Three and eight for the side of Colorado Frost with the top cut. Is there a momentum in one team's favor right now? Absolutely. Wyoming, a 3-0 in the control against Colorado Frost, who smacked them in map number one. Absolutely. Upset alert, potentially on the table. The cards all flipped in the wrong ways for the side of Colorado Frost. Wyoming up and towards the top. They're going to be flying from what we would call the control defensive side first. There's Iguana finds two. Yeti finds one. Propex, the last one alive. He'll spawn over towards P2, but we've got parallels already here in map number four. What a great opening break off. You saw Colorado Frost. Two players actually spawned out towards the initial spawns for University of Wyoming. This has to be read. It has to be recognized. But inside the plane, University of Wyoming, they are the captain. Now, a little bit of a 2v1. Arctos runs out of bullets. Neon finds a nice little two. A nice little trade and a little scrap warfare going on in the center of the plane. But at the end of it all, University of Wyoming Esports, they're able to get the P2 spawns. Now, given you got 20 seconds left to scrap over and slide P1, and University of Wyoming, they're sliding out. What? They flipped those spawns so fast, too, proper. I, I mean, they flipped, what is that, 10 seconds, and they already had P2s for themselves off of I parallels and contention up towards the top. So, I mean, Colorado Frost, yeah, cool. You get seven seconds of scrap time, but look at player number four. He spawns across the map. So now Colorado Frost have an opportunity to break through the front door. Arctos falls. Metro finds the kill. They've got a three versus one on the point, and he falls as well. All the time in the middle map, all the time that you spent flipping the spawns amounts to basically nothing as Colorado Frost are able to break back in the same thing that we saw on P2 of Raid for Hardpoint. All right. Now we're going to slow back down. All right, Frost. A little stabilize here. We're going to read a lot of isolated players. Big 1v1 comes through. Iguana was trying to make a little bit of a pinch play happen. Last little squabble inside of the yellow cargo container. Go through for Colorado Frost. They will win successfully for the scrap time here on P2. I'm going to look towards this rotation. University of Wyoming, they're actually still dedicating numbers towards this tube. And that might just be a little bit of a misplay at the end of it all. Could give Colorado Frost the opportunity to surge on forward. Won't be the case. Middle of the map, University of Wyoming are trying to set themselves up for a successful P3. Well, you've got top lane control of one up oh, towards oh. the top. Uh, <laughs> tried to reload right there, and oh, oh. Kodiak's almost. Oh, I thought. Was able to give Razzle Dazzle the Razzle Dazzle, but his Colorado Frost are over towards P2. They spawn over towards P5 as well. So an opportunity for a bit of a pinch play here as long as Metro is able to play this angle nice and fast. Metro gets the kill there onto Arcto, so that sets up the play for the side of Colorado Frost to get back in. They've got two players in towards the point. Three players go down, though, as Wyoming now looking for a couple more. They're going to have P3 control. 40 seconds left. P4 on the dock at up next and that's where teams really have to start making their mainstay and presence known and that's exactly what player number eight and pro flex is starting to do this is a really good p3 coming out for the university of wyoming esports so look at the way that they're continuously just looking and reading numbers trying to count heads trying to deal with where colorado frost are pushing all the way through and the crossfire is absolutely supreme what whoa razzle down yeah body shots absolutely necessary right there living up to their name i don't know how the hell you walked away with that but impressive to say the least now tied up here 62 apiece as we focus towards the rotation over towards this north lane colorado frost with the surging of kills it all comes down to this top lane control yet he should just look to keep this in their favor 
from the back here. Oh my god, great timing there for Yeti onto Neon. He's gonna fly around over towards that yellow crate, and behind him, Proplex comes Metro as well, up towards the top. Iguana with the plane control. They should be able to get in towards this point with some more shots over the top, and continuous middle map control. The side of Wyoming Esports are looking extremely good to go ahead and hold on to P number four and make it their mainstay for the time being. Iguana now on three. Top plane control once again has been so huge all game long. Unfortunately, he jumps down before a player is able to make a flank, but it was Arctos there to cut down the flanker before it could even be spotted out and of course hopped up on towards top lane so iguana he's just been playing the vertical game he's jumped down jumps back up jumps down again jumps back up has been in front behind all around players metro will fall as well one more around the left side nine bullets left in the mag nobody challenging iguana just yet looking for streaks potentially here is the player up top when the plane falls for colorado frost they get a great amount of time over towards p4 and they've got the setup over towards p5 yeah, they, this back end of uh, coming off of P2, getting broken in the first 20 seconds. This is the University of Wyoming Esports that I, I've really been able to enjoy watching through this best of five series. Just slowing things up, playing to their strengths, playing to these angles. Yeti is beaming inside of Wood. 14 and 9 for them. Razzle Dazzle at 11 and 8. Arctos, yes, is at a, a very uh, characteristic 5 and 10 now. Things have definitely slowed up, but look at the other players coming through, especially Iguana, 17 and 9, off the opening rip has been beaming with Colorado Frost with a late break still battling over for 30 seconds if you're University of Wyoming this is 30 seconds that you're willing to concede given that you are looking towards the second set of hills with power positions Wanna? Found himself the artillery barrage, looks over towards, oh my god, he had a kill in Killhouse, and unfortunately, just a millisecond of time won't go his way, so a back up towards the top, Neon will fall as well, and the setup back for P1, this is a very, very closely contested game proper, with both of these teams being about two seconds apart at the next tick of the next hard point, 111-109 breaks on in, Arctos finds two, and uh, although he's not having the greatest performance like we saw in map number three, we can't expect the player with the statistically lowest KD to have hero games every single Single time he steps onto a map however in these last couple of respawns specifically he's been the difference maker for the side of wyoming yeah really has been i mean again it, you know iguana didn't he was right there with the rest of their team had a terrible first hard point everybody did hey that was an almost blowout 250 to 166 was that initial score line but versus of wyoming they have definitely warmed up here coming through the series only with about a 30 point lead but then when you're looking through the second set of hills it's really just playing for this p2 spawns Super Wyoming, they're able to do it through the first step of Colorado Frost. They're trying to hit towards the P2 spawns while also keeping P1 in mind. They would love to be able to keep University of Wyoming on their back foot, given with how the first set of hills went. Remember, Colorado Frost did get the break within the first 20 seconds. So they can go ahead and do it again. Well, two kills well, right not? off the rip. Well, that'll help a little bit more. There, there's third, so proper... Uh... You know, history, once again, repeats itself, just it like does. we saw in the first hard point. Razzle Dazzle will find two, so an uh, opportunity for a break back once again. But thus far, Wyoming, they've got to have more pressure over towards not only the front, but making sure players from middle map under the plane can't get back over towards the point, because that's where they broke. That's when they've been broke from every single time. And well, lead change after lead change, Colorado Frost back in control once again, pushing over towards the AS and D lane. Metro is there. So are the rest of his teammates not bad remember again if history is doomed to repeat itself remember how p3 through 5 went for university of wyoming esports but still doing a good job of just trying to spread through the middle of the map trying to keep colorado frost just locked out from working up the staircase proplex was being a little bit aggressive there we'll be dealt with a swift hand via arctos but still just trying to play for x frags doesn't necessarily mean you got to give your life up towards the yellow cargo container but still we set it towards a rotation towards the center of the map. This is where players like Iguana and Yeti could really start moving through the map. Yep. Uh, given off the crossfire, the Razzle Dazzle is going to be looking to set up. Three go down now, making a fourth. P2 spawns coming through from the side of Colorado Frost. Their largest lead of the game now shrinking as Wyoming has gotten themselves back in towards the point. The Cowboys out there corralling a bit of hill time. And as they look for a couple more players, they're coming out to the front. The quick shots were there, but Metro just looking for another play up and towards oh, the top no. lane. Oh, there was no business of him winning that gunfight. Somehow gets it done. I believe he actually spotted Arctos around the corner as well off spawns, but he wanted to help his teammate out in middle map and then be able to call up the spawns to the rest of his teammates to where they can set up on the power position. Go ahead and find the kills as well, Metro. Just go ahead and give yourself all the players on the map this proplex is there for the trades yet he gets the last say in the gunfights over towards p3 p4 next up on the docket and well players number three and four they've got themselves rotated over with 15 seconds of scrap time and all in yeti's favor five in a row why are you peeking around the corner right there i get you know that's potential streaks and they fall immediately 
Crossfire is just absolutely supreme there for P3s, where a lot of teams have been able to get a lot of time. You got players inside the plane, builds quite the successful P3 for University of Wyoming, and even off the respawn, those ARs have been absolutely beaming. There's Yeti with a quick six towards this A lane for P4. Turns around the corner, nice bait and switch, had some help behind with Arctos. Now they're just going to be looking to set up shop here on this north lane, setting Colorado Frost. They're going to have those yellow cargo containers for those spawns. Big 1v1 inside the plane. Razzle Dazzle should know that there's a player right here. Has a oh. shot punch. It's not too oh. bad. And they're going to die because of those body shots. But even still, Colorado Frost, these are much needed kills to try to get themselves on this hill. And that can be big too, Proper, because here's the thing. If he has his gun up ready for a potential player pushing through top plane, that could be top plane control. Easy beams in towards the point. And although Arctos is there to clean it up, he's able to find one shot onto the next. Three players go down now, make it a fourth. They've got themselves time and towards the point 15 seconds of scrap now they're gonna be down but they're gonna be just about close if they're able to get the rest of the scraps however colorado frost didn't want to give that up p5 is the side of wyoming's to hold on to and well this is really in their court now the ball they can't drop it if they do they might lose the game because of it yeah, they gotta go now. Players 1 and 2, Razzle Dazzle and Yeti, they spawn out over by P2, so now they're just sprinting. That is exactly why on board here with Iguana will put themselves in the back part of this tool's room. Just trying to wait for their reinforcements to come all the way through. Oh, no. From across the map, they oh, will no. be cut down. That is a convincing kill for the Colorado Cross for here. But University of Wyoming, they spawn in. Metro's able to raid it. Finds themselves <laughs> another. Streak's potentially trying to be called in here, but it's all to the benefit of Colorado Frost. And it's not enough. Nothing comes from the streaks being used. You heard all of them get put down, but nothing comes in the way of kills. So now Colorado Frost still hold on to the point. Contest, they have to come in, but nobody is there now. Just 20 seconds away from forcing things to a game number five. We said it was a potential upset alert. There goes the contest. All he's got to do is stay in for a couple more seconds. However, maybe find a full break. No, 10 seconds left. The closest that they can be to winning this game is going to be about, I'd say, 10 seconds away. They've got top playing control as as well all three players from the side of colorado state or excuse me colorado frost are there and as they push around the corner shots are there onto one team kill not going to be good enough however as arctos falls or actually finds the kill two more are going to fall now it's going to be a one versus three up to and towards the top plane metro finds the kill more shots are there iguana back and forth the players from the side of colorado frost can they go ahead and hold on strong contestion still there wall bangs are there it's a frontal assault for both of the teams towards the point kodiaks finds two metro a team kill there's pro play the last one alive gonna be Iguana shot punch from behind 10 seconds left They've got to hop up on the wing or else this is gonna be a GG. They can do it There's time, but the shots from Metro are there finds one <laughs> finds two He returns the shots to the body as they go ahead and force the map number five The frosty ice of Colorado comes out from the Rockies and forces a game number five yeah, I mean, I gotta say, this was a lot closer than uh, Colorado Frost probably really wanted it to be, 250 to 193, but off the opening rip and from P3 and 4 as well, University of Wyoming Esports, they really went to the drawing board and had a clear-cut strategy of how to get themselves a lot of time off of those hills. <sighs> Cowboys coming off strong off the opening rip as well. I mean, they flipped those spawns with what almost felt like the opening 15 seconds, and that's just impressive. Again, that decisive nature, they just can't be afraid of themselves. So really at the end of the at the end of the day to make those plays, because if you're able to make those plays and create the space, you're probably more than likely gonna keep those enemy teams off guard. Not even Colorado Frost, but for any team that you play in the future. But again, yep. that same narrative, that same little key to victory, if you will, has to come all the way through because the hard point, the respawns, we made it through. And again, the overall narrative, you had to steal a respawn. Job well done, University of Wyoming. They were able to take that great control convincingly. <laughs> three to zero but towards raid search and destroy this is where things get yep. a little cheeky for both of these teams three and oh overall for university of wyoming esports on this map mode combo they six three against new mexico state university and that within its own self was a barn burner of a match where you really got to see players like razzle dazzle iguana and yeti really come to life but arctos if it's an objective map here on raid maybe they just might pop off again that's what happened on the raid control <laughs> i'm not entirely sure but it's got to come down to those ars yeah. finding those first bloods that decisive call to be able to rotate through a multitude of different avenues across mm -hmm. the sites this is no miami by the stretch of the imagination that middle of the map makes both of those sites very approachable given those very kills true. that have to come through your way on an offensive side proper you mentioned new mexico state university well a one-way ticket for one of these two teams after a game number five sends them their way for an elimination match in also a qualification match to get into the 64 team twenty-five thousand dollars ccl season three playoffs 
on the other side of the break, the conclusion to the epic five game showdown between both of these two teams and one more opportunity for the upset to happen. I'm a cornmeal. That's proper cast. And we'll be back with you for map number five. A Black Ops 2 throwback showdown here for game number five. Raid, search, and destroy between the Cowboys and the Colorado Frost are going to lead us into our elimination match number two. But more importantly, this itself is an elimination match. Whoever doesn't win this map number five is going home in the season. Although you get a lot of practice out of it, what's for nothing? Again, three and two for Colorado Frost versus the undefeated on this map mode through CCL 2021. Razzle Dazzle, great first blood. That's more than going to guarantee that the entire push is going to come through A. Iguana getting nerdy as well will bite a bullet, but still. Nice little resurgence and rotation University of Wyoming Esports in a 3v3. Slow push over towards A. Excuse me, B. Ring control for the side of Colorado Frost, at least somewhat. Razzle Dazzle was able to find the first blood in the round, still keeping away with his life. Metro, some shots over the top, gives away Met Razzle Dazzle's position. However, they get some information that the players are still over towards B. So player number six and Yeti might be able to rotate back, but also doesn't want to give a free plant push over towards A either. Ten bullets left here for Razzle Dazzle. Player pushing over towards the left. It's going to be Metro who finds the big kill there. Shoots the body for good measure after the fact. Has to make sure the player is dead. And this Proplex looks over towards the top. <laughs> Yeti and Arctos play the big pillars push through middle map. Bombs down now on a and they can just play this very passively as metro and his teammate need to push quickly and with 20 seconds left i get you're trying to play over towards the kitchen but it might not work out in your favor and as metro pushes up the map tries to grab the bomb gonna go ahead and get it down but he heard the bomb get picked up shots around the top oh no arthas almost falls but with 10 seconds left yet he just needs to play his life run away they're right above and below each other playing number four around to the right oh. and he's not gonna be able to see him in a great round win from wyoming does exactly what they couldn't do in map number two it puts them up 1-0 early on in the s &D. Yeah, and this was just such a big play from the two players in the middle of the map. They never left this position. They slowly encroached their way out from Kitchen. This is where that first blood came from. Razzle Dazzle, great awareness just to read this spot in case the A push came up driveway, which it did. They're at least able to find first blood and keep their life. That really slowed down the push going forward for Colorado Frost. But when those two players did poke out from uh, from the pillar side, you were really hoping that Proplex was going to be able to keep Neon alive once they were working their way towards the bomb. But not going to be the case. They get slammed down. And it just really blew up the potential of trying to squeak out an offense down at the University of Wyoming Esports. They would love this ace or this B site as well. Metro's going to have to be that player over by this fan to try to deal with it, but they press too close towards ring, and they'll be first-blooded because of it. Another first-blood for Wyoming, but the equalizer comes out once again, makes it a three versus three. And Well, two quick kills make it a three versus two, and Rassle Tassel, some great shots there on the blue van, is going to tie things up at a two-two. Yeti with one in middle map, Kodiaks will fall, Neon tries to challenge out, but wisely backing off was the side of Wyoming, and they're going to make this a little bit easier on themselves as they'll reset over towards B. This should be a free plant, player number two, all the way across the bedroom, and of course the players don't necessarily know that, but now the side of Wyoming might wrap all the way back over towards B, potentially, and go get the bomb down there however they're gonna wrap on the way back five and six playing together play number two and zig gonna be the last one alive for colorado frost oh this would be big if neon can isolate one of these kills but wise enough just goes towards top red maybe they can get this extra kill on the razzle dazzle oh, yes no. they do isolated 1v1s 38 seconds remaining neon is gonna reposition through driveway Oh, yeah, he's got a great positioning over towards that left side, though. Now, with the Semtex coming through, he's going to be able to know that player's over by the ramp, but can he get a little aggressive here? Yes, he can. Yet he wins it. 2-0 up for Wyoming. They continue the spree of great rounds that they had for map number two here in the raid, search and destroy in game number five. And, you know, different map completely than Miami. 3-0 for a reason here. The side of Wyoming showing it thus far. And again, I mean, when you're looking at this from Colorado Frost's perspective across the entire 2021 season, map bans and vetoes you get rid of moscow that is a seven map win on that map mode for university of wyoming esports colorado frost though they're dealing Pretty via good. the other comfort pack from both of these sides you can see it come all, all the way through oh middle of the map will be red but it will be answered back in kind four players deep just trying to work with the rotations yeti with a nice little turn Colorado Frost still had the advantage, 3-2. to two. Oh my goodness, an Ego Chow of the century there from Yeti, who's also on four in a row. I love the Ego Chow to get a bit aggressive there. However, these two players from Money can absolutely fly out at Yeti at any moment and go ahead and create a pinch play. However, they're just going to stay in Money for the time being, wait for a potential play from player number eight in middle map and Iguana to push through the map. But 
for the time being, it's going to be very slow. Yeti going to be able to make this play over towards the right side. Shots there on to Cody X. He's been peppered, and so is Yeti. Time after time, neither player able to find the kill just yet. But here comes Iguana proper. Did he play this? The timing, perfect. Cody X back to middle map, but there's two players there. Proplex waiting and ready. And then it's now Yeti in a one versus three. Yeah, I noticed there's a player behind them, too. Metro got the opening shots. That round was more than... Dusted the second that you saw Colorado Frost, they just stopped. This four player push towards the center of the map was so fast and absolutely furious as well. This is typically coupled along. You got an SMG player to try to push through the middle of the map. while well, you have an AR player in that exact position just to spam through the Zig stairway to try to give them the cross. And the ability to get close towards that Zig staircase, it wasn't there. University of Wyoming, they lost the numbers quite early on. And Colorado Frost, they just the kitchen and money. And they're like, oh, well, we got a minute and 15. Might as well just kind of set up shop. They quick little PB and J and take the round. All right, we're now one round lead. University of Wyoming, love this B side again. And Colorado Frost are like, hey, the middle of the map seemed pretty good last round. Let's do it on defense too. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Well, it's aggressive. Let's give them that. However, Wyoming, they've got two first bloods to Colorado Frost, just one. Defense and offense have been won by Wyoming as Colorado Frost has only managed to go ahead thus far and get themselves an offensive round win, albeit it came from a very aggressive middle map push, which we see them doing once again. Yeti, unfortunate timing. Metro finds one as well. All of a sudden, it's a four versus two. Metro somehow doesn't get the shots found on him by Iguana. Arctos is there for the retaliation. They're playing this one together, and I'm not sure if Metro was able to call out the other player in Arctos over towards the library. <laughs> I mean, laundry, but proper. He's stuck in a corner with three players all with ARs, pre-aiming the entirety of that side of the map. You're going to lose that nine times out of ten, both teams winning offense and a defense tying up now at two to two. And these plays are a lot more doable on a map like Raid comparatively to Miami. And that's why we didn't see it happen all too much uh, from this Colorado Frost side is because of how big the map is. And you can absolutely punish on the very long avenues, quite literally, uh, that is coming out from Miami. But even still here on Raid, you got a lot of inner workings for SMG players to really get themselves nice and cozy into these corners and aggressive at that. Makes your AR's life just all the more easy, don't, doesn't it? So... The Pro Flex up at 5-1 and one on a three spree themselves. Two rounds in a row for both these teams. Well, Shades of Miami, it was three to back to back for both of these teams. But now Colorado Frost flipping the switch. They don't want B. They would like A. Well, they had to send more players to middle map this time on the side of Wyoming. Because if they didn't, well, they were risking themselves getting pushed all the way through once again. Metro helps Kodiak find the kill to Razzle Dazzle over on ring. And this should be a free ant at A. And... Well, Yeti uh, able to find the shots first. So three versus two. Wyoming back in the driver's seat for another round win, potentially. But as Metro finds one around the corner, somehow able to win that huge gunfight. And now it's going to be down to Yeti trying to find some shots onto Metro once again. Neon was over towards the top, but the glass breaks. Did they hear that audio cue from the back? I don't think so. But they're going to go ahead and get it down over towards A. Iguana there. Looks to the shots there on the Neon. Metro is there. Looks to water. Step the shots. Iguana the 1v2 to put them up 3-2 to two in the round count. Wyoming once again showing the proficiency in SND, but more importantly, Iguana coming up clutch once again when his team absolutely needs him. Oh man, and Iguana really caught Neon off guard. They look down underneath bedroom, and the first shot when they try to snap goes wide. That's a little counter strafe as well. Keep themselves going. Again, when you go back and you really look at what University of Wyoming Esports found a lot of success on, as far as search and destroy Miami, it was coming out from Iguana and Yeti. Slowly flying through the map and finding these quality beams. Colorado Frost, they are not letting up the gas. They're taking the middle of the map quite aggressively. First of Wyoming, I mean, they just want this A site, but the second that they poke up through this open staircase, it will be met by a first Ooh. blood. A lot of information being traded out for these both for these two teams. Proplex makes a huge play through middle map. There was two players there. Now they ramp back to the kitchen. A player in zigzag holding down middle map as well. But it is the last two players from Wyoming over towards A. Bomb has not gone down just yet. Iguana and his teammate Arctos looking to play for at least the first pick here to equate it at two versus two. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen as Iguana now last alive in a one versus three. And in a one v odd situation, nine times out of ten, you're not going to win this gunfight. Should be around on the side of Colorado Frost. But 45 seconds, a lot of time to work with. Bomb in hand, so he doesn't have to go running around the map trying to chase that bomb down. But it is going to be a push up towards the zig. Not going to check this left corner. Iguana's done. Oh, what? Neon was looking straight to zig. Doesn't see the player to his right now. It's a one versus two. Okay. Manageable. Much more now. Metro's all the way on that right side. Doesn't spot Ooh, the player in Iguana tiny. running. And now they gave up A completely for freaks. They're wrapping over towards B. Iguana can get this one down unless Metro goes over towards cutout. But even then, he won't be able to find the player there. They're going to get the cue that the bomb goes down at A. Another 45 seconds to work with here. And now, somehow, Wyoming technically has the better positioning with Iguana having the bomb down. 
But Iguana, I think, only has a 74 year here, Alex. So this is going to be really tough. They would love to isolate these skills. No, Pro Plays get caught in the mantle. Nice 1v1 <laughs> coming through, given the gift of the gods of the mantle. And we know this because of the X-Ray and the mini-map. Metro is inside of Tiki. And you just got to play the time. Check from money window. Okay, the bomb's good. Oh, no, he, he, might he could be laying here. front. Oh, no, the shots! Ah, uh, that's such a tough spot to recheck for over the bomb because, yeah, if they're laying prone and they're trying to inchworm their way from the side, you see right to the that bench to the right of Metro, you got to pop out and check that. Never gave up the angle from that long chair outside of Tiki. And was able to get that 1v1. But, man, I tell you, that got really <laughs> freaky towards the end. But inch by inch, round by round, these two teams are getting themselves closer and closer towards the next uh, qualifier match. I mean, look, Iguana, you had a 1v2 earlier. Could have had a 1v3 right there, and just unfortunate cut timing doesn't go your way. But, Ali, again, you, you said it. He made that one a lot more close than it was for comfort. And as we go into the seventh round here in the S&D, one team looking to go ahead and take the advantage once again. First time the side of Wyoming really hasn't had much of a stern advantage in the game, but they go back to a defensive side. Two Semtexes through the kitchen. Somehow aren't able to find the kill there on the Yeti, and as Arctos finds the first kill, looking for Neon and P5, he should have help from a couple of teammates. Proplex Metro find a couple. Oh, now make it a third as well. Arctos falls. Colorado Frost going four to three, but proper. I, I must say, although it's a different map, although it's game five, the composure was there from the side of Wyoming last time when they were down four to three and they went in round 11. So if this is anything like it was in the hard points where it repeated itself, another round five on the table? I hope so. Yeah, but Alex, <laughs> I mean, they, they've really struggled with all the aggression that Colorado Frost has been bringing to the table. Every true. single time Very they've true. gotten aggressive in the middle of the map and even in one of these lanes, even having the opening bullet doesn't really matter. If we could pull up the stats real quick, I'm really wondering what the first blood ratio is uh, compared between these two teams. Yeah, University of Wyoming to the two of Colorado Frost, has five first bloods. That is a given stat of how many rounds they've lost with an early numbers advantage. Well, early numbers this time for the side of Wyoming. Four versus two. The last couple of rounds, it's been the side of Wyoming that was forced to clutch. This time, Colorado, they're going to have to be at least the one forcing the hand here. Metro finds one at nine and four. The best, uh, well, the second best player on the side of the Frost. Proplex leading the way at ten and four. Three spree here for Metro. And he'd love to find these last three kills, but he doesn't realize he's got a player coming from behind, tying up for a piece. And... Oh, an extra couple of shots to finish off the top. As the Cowboy falls, the Cowboys take another round. And this was such a great play from the Cowboys. <laughs> Get your yees and your haws in, in, in the chat if you really want them to be able to bring this all the way through because that was a rodeo of a play. I mean, Arctos found that first blood across that top uh, of the Van Hetty, and then they pushed all the way through from Laundry. I mean, that is just a very early search and destroy play that you can do on raid. <laughs> Taking in your league matches, you might just find success as long as you're clearing out that Laundry window. Because Wyoming Esports, they do that wonderfully. There are those early <coughs> shots. Yeti will be that player covering Arctos to show themselves in the middle of the map. But they lose two players over by Laundry, so this is the B side open. Should be. Or towards oh, Yeti. A. Uh, oh, Yeti. Are they going to be able to find the shots? No, Neon gets the kill there. Arctos there. One finds the second shots, but Colorado Frost, more importantly, finds the round proper. <laughs> it's 5 4 again. I That's mean, all I really they, can say. <laughs> you want to talk about composure. They, this is just when the adrenaline hits you just a little bit too hard. You're already a handful of seconds. You lost those two players over by laundry. You were sitting inside a kitchen in the middle of the map. You gotta suggest to yourself that there could potentially be a player, if not in ring, all the way past that bomb site as well. SMG or AR doesn't matter. That's what really bites them in the rear end that time around. I will say proper. Arctos has uh, four times the kills he had in map uh, number two for the SMB, and as Razzle Dazzle finds a kill there, yet he finds another, and here we go. Four versus two. Metro with some shots over the top makes things a bit easier for the side of the Colorado Frost. And as Proplex finds another, puts himself at 14 and 4 on a 4 spree, looking for two more in the round here. And SMG playing close. Yeti with the AR at a very long range angle. Now Water Steps, a potential push for Proplex. And now they're going to try and set up this pinch. But they've got no idea Yeti's playing over towards the basketball court. So as Yeti plays this corner, I don't think he saw Metro jump up there, but he almost was able to do so. Not going to be able to spot his head over towards the left either. Down the staircase, it's going to be Metro who finds that first kill. Yeti at the basketball court. They've got to be careful here. They both stack up. He's able to find the first player on the defuse. The last player in Metro is there. He just has to play time here. Doesn't matter how long it takes. All he has to do is pick around the corner, but no, he's gonna run up. He's gonna go. He's around the corner. The Ninja Defuse gonna come through. Yes, it does. Colorado Frost take the series six to four of the SD three to two overall. They'll move on to play New Mexico.
Mexico State University and Wyoming. A heartbreaking loss after getting two kills down early in that round. Oh, my heart is broken. But Colorado Frost, they're sending the side of the Cowboys back to where they came from. We'll see you later. GG's qualification round match coming up. Oh, my God. Oh, pro proper, proper's done. He said he's out. He, after, after a round like that, he's gone. Black screen, proper's gone. I mean, <laughs> can, can, you, can you have much better of a matchup than that? A 5-5 five, five that was in map number two turns into a 5-4 there. They had a 4-2 advantage. All of a sudden, Proplex, who had uh, dropped 15 kills inside of the S&D with this team, Mate and Metro make the four versus two a reality. Yeti somehow, someway isn't able to find that. They stretched the bomb to get it planted. They stretched the bomb to get the defuse. Couldn't see him around the corner. Oh my God, folks, you you just witnessed a breakdown in, in round number 10. And as I said beforehand, proper, he, uh, as you can see from my left, he he's not there. He, he's gone, but oh my goodness, folks, that, that is a map that none of us will soon forget here in the CCL. And unfortunately, as a side of Wyoming, they do unfortunately drop out of contention for playoffs and are sent home. Their season will come to a close, but it was a valiant effort to say the least from getting 3 out at the beginning of the year by this Colorado Frost roster to then being able to take them all the way to a game number five and almost force it to a round 11 that just falls short because of a couple of plays that went wrong. He had the right idea to play time, Unfortunately, it just didn't work out. So, folks, with that being said, we've got one more match here coming up tonight. It's a side of Colorado Frost, who just barely won that series, taking on New Mexico State University, the number 10 seed versus the lower seed in New Mexico State at number 7. Thank you for staying up late with us here. It's 1230 on the East Coast, and, uh, well, we've got another match, potential another five games to go all the distance through. So my name's McCormick, alongside myself has been Proper Cast, and we'll be back here for one more series on the Alpha Stream.